welcome in hockey fans, ACHA hockey fans. Day three complete at the ACHA National Tournament. Scott Strandy with you in Denver, Colorado tonight. My co-host is always Stephen Marsh on special duty in St. Louis. Stephen, how are you holding up after 12 games? I'm still alive. That's the key thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm, quite a challenge, isn't it? Well, and, and I don't like that this year, daylight savings time has fallen while all this is going on. So I'm going to be <laughs> one less hour of sleep than I would normally get, which I'm not getting a lot. I'm getting maybe six, seven hours. Now I'm getting one less because it's daylight savings time tonight. So. <laughs> I hear you. It's happening to all of us unless you live in Arizona. So, <laughs> Okay, let's jump into this. Day three. Um, these are the guys that hadn't played yet. Um, your thoughts on what you saw today in day three? Yeah, well, you know, I, I was really, uh, was really, we had a couple of games that were really good. Um, you know, as, including our first game overtime real, game, right? Yes, our first overtime game. Yes, uh, Central Oklahoma, Indiana Tech. Uh, the sixth seed against the the eleventh seed there, Indiana Tech. That one was a really physical game. It was really a uh, uh, players were getting banged up. I think a couple of players went out, one for each team that had to be helped off the ice. So it was a really uh, physical game. But that's the kind of game Central Oklahoma plays. They're they're a physical team like that, and and I guess Indiana, so Tech, Indiana is Tech too. <laughs> Indiana yeah. Tech, yeah. And, and and if you Watched the video on 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 the Twitter account uh, with Michael Rivera after the game. He said that this is probably the most physical team that they've played, or team that came ready to play. You know that kind of game than than anybody that they played this year. So, um, you know, it was a really, you know, they, you know, really sl- good game. I mean, it went to overtime, but it ended very fast. And uh, luckily, you know, Central Oklahoma got got the win for them, so they got to, to move on. So we have. Um, our second WCHL team in the uh, quarterfinals, of course, UNLV advanced yesterday, and of course, Central Oklahoma advanced today. So, two WCHL teams in the final eight. Not bad. Okay, let, let me tell you what I saw today. Um, I saw a well-oiled machine in Liberty, and I think UNLV will absolutely have their hands full tomorrow with Liberty. Um, they've been there for a week. They've uh, been on a professional training regimen. Uh, I heard uh, Kirk Candy tell you, the head coach, that uh, they've been getting up at 7 in the morning and, and preparing for 10, 15 games like it was uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, they played um, UN, or, uh, Maryville in a little scrimmage, and then they've been practicing every morning at game time. So uh, it showed a 7-1 victory over um, uh, Illinois but, today, and they were but just he even the said team that, from the start. He even said, though, that, that they kind of got off to a slow start. We're kind of seeing that with these teams, you know, that, that it takes them a bit to get going, but you know, once they got going, man, it, it was, uh, you, you couldn't stop them really. And, and so that was, uh, yeah, Liberty is a, is a really good team. They're, they're determined uh, to, to win. And of course, UNLV is as well. And of course we know how good UNLV is, you know, these teams have played each other already. So uh, we know we can get to that multiple times. Again, but, Multiple yeah. times and very physical series too in the uh, uh, in feisty series too in the intense series that's what I'm looking for intense series that took place in Virginia uh, the two games there so we'll we'll see what kind of game is when one game is on the line here to, to move on to the semifinals that it's, right. it's a shame that that it's 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 a shame that's the first game of the day because that that, that one has potential to be a really a good one uh, yeah tomorrow. I agree. And you mentioned UCO winning in overtime, uh, a lot closer than uh, I think they'd expected with Indiana Tech, maybe, but uh, a two-one overtime. So uh, UCO moves on. They will play. Um, who do they play? They get. Uh, they get Indiana Iowa State. Already. Iowa State. They get Iowa State. That will be another really good game, though. Trust me, all four of these games are going to be pretty good, with the exception of maybe that last one. I don't know that Stony Brook can hang with uh, Liberty especially with Liberty's uh, big news coming up. Uh, Lindenwood, Scott. Gonna be Lindenwood. What did I say? You said Liberty. Oh, yeah, Lindenwood. My, my good catch. Uh, Lin- no, Lindenwood I know, but, yeah. and Stony Brook, yes. Um, and then Adrian 
uh, was the dominating performance over Missouri State. I don't know. I, I didn't see much of that game, Stephen. You were there. Was was Missouri State just not ready to play? Were they missing players? Were they sick? I mean, 14 nothing. How the heck does that happen? Yeah, you know, that – I really felt bad for them. I I was working on getting the, the Central Oklahoma videos edited and uploaded to Twitter, so I, I actually missed the, the start of that game because it was such a quick turnaround because of that. The other game went uh, a little long, and so I was getting those other videos done, and I, I, I kept hearing the goal horn go off, and I was just like, what's going on? And I look out the at this media room on the, the concourse there, and it was like all of a sudden it was like two to three nothing. Adrian, I'm like, whoa, you know, so I – I go out there and they just, uh, and I, so then I went out there and watched the rest of the period and it was just a, a, a barrage and uh, you feel bad, you know, they, they, they tried to, to take a timeout to try to stop the momentum and that just didn't seem to, to work. And then they switched goaltenders and put the other goaltender in, but uh, they kept scoring there. So then they ended up putting the other goaltender back in, uh, Steven. So nothing was really working uh, for, for Missouri state. I was talking with somebody that, um, does some Missouri State um, coverage for, um, I guess, the, the student paper or whatever. He, he, was, he was there covering the, the game for, for that. And he did go – he had he went down – I said, I said that he went down to get it, talk with the head coach after that game. So I, I asked him, he came back up, he was finishing his story in the room there. And I said, what did he have to – what did Jeremy Law have to say? You know, I wasn't going to go and do it and certainly an interview with him afterwards on camera. So uh, they, they basically just – he said that, that um, you know, they just kind of – when Adrian just kind of started scoring, the just the game kind of got away from Missouri State, and they never just really could recover from that um, from that initial barrage of, of goals by uh, by Adrian. So, but you know, Adrian's a tough team. Um, you know, they're the defending, cha- defending they're the champs. defending champions, defending champs, and they're still the defending champs until somebody knocks them off. So, so they're still in in the competition. So, uh, they're in the top eight. You know, they're ranked uh, they're ranked number seven. Um, so they're they're in a good spot. So you know, it's gonna. And they have a matchup with Ohio, which maybe that was an un, kind of unexpected. They were probably thinking they were going to have to play Minot State, but because of the big upset yesterday, they're going to play Ohio. So that ought to be interesting. It, it just because of I, I, I'm a little nervous to see how that one might play. Is Adrian going to blow Ohio up? Because uh, you know, or Ohio are they going to make this Cinderella run and go to the semifinals? I mean, who knows? Let me tell you what I know. Those two teams are. Uh, they were ranked wrongly, if that's a word I can use. They were incorrectly ranked. In, How about that? In, in, they, incorrectly, improperly, whatever yeah, you want to use. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're both better teams than seven and 15. And uh, tomorrow you're going to see a real battle. They've both been there. They're both experienced. They both have great coaches that have been there and, uh, and coach at this level. So um, they know what it takes. As you mentioned, Adrian, the defending champion, Ohio has been there before in that championship game. And, um, it's going to be a battle. So I would say you've got a really good game in the morning at 1015. I think you've got a great game at 130. I believe you've got an excellent game at 445. And I'm not sold yet on Stony Brook because not so much Stony Brook, but I am convinced that Lindenwood is just on a, uh, a mission. We all know that they want to win this tournament. Um, things have been leaking out. Uh, I'll have an official announcement on Wednesday and a press conference on Monday, but <coughs> excuse me. Um, yeah. It, it appears that they're about ready to go to the next level, which would be NCAA hockey. And congratulations to uh, Rick Zombo and everybody for that. If that's in fact what the announcement is, I don't want to leak it out. I just want to uh, say that that's what the rumors are out there right now. And um, if it happens, I'll be there to cover it because they will be added to our, NCAA coverage next year, if that's what yeah, they do. So, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure if if it's if it's in the works, I'm sure they're not going to do anything until the ACHA tournament is over. Whether maybe if they go all the way to the finals or if they get eliminated, well, but I'm sure they they would wait till the uh, ACHA tournament is completed before they would make that official announcement. Before that official announcement would come out, I would I would I would hope that they would that that would at least wait till then. Yeah, I've been told that there's a there's a press conference set for next Monday, not this coming Monday, but the following Monday. Um, and, I, and we're all anticipating that's what it's going to be. So I don't think it's any kept secret that they've been pushing towards that. 
uh, all year. So we'll see what happens. I know they'd like to go out on the high note and win their own uh, the tournament that they're hosting, uh, the ACJ National Division One yeah. tournament and one tournament. So, okay, so you've gotten through three days, you got four days, and then I promised you Monday would be much easier because you only you don't have to be there till four forty five game. Uh, and then the the plus, championship plus is you're gonna, one game Tuesday. Plus, you're gonna be you're gonna you're just gonna show up with those only two games. I mean, you're gonna it's gonna be easy pickets <laughs> when you by the time you get here. Oh, listen, pal, I was there last year. I know exactly. What I know, I know. Uh, and and it's not like I've been sitting around. I've been getting my treatments, and I've been also I know, uh, yeah. I know, uh, yeah. also saw a great series between Denver yeah. and uh, Miami. University, Miami University of Ohio, yep. um, and uh, incidentally, Stephen, the uh, the NCHC playoffs all were sweeps. That's the three series, but all four of them were sweeps. So uh, Denver will face uh, Minnesota Duluth, um, and North Dakota will face Western Michigan. Those will be the four teams in the frozen faceoff for uh, NCHC hockey coming up um, next Friday and Saturday. Yeah, that's that's very uh very cool. So that means you won't have to worry about a game tomorrow there in Denver. <laughs> Your schedule no, frees up a little bit. <laughs> and, and another shout out to uh, that uh, Atlantic Hockey winner tonight, Air Force. They also swept Army. Uh, so that's a uh, that that's a pretty big deal for Air Force as well. So we still yeah, have Paul, Air Force in Denver. Uh, Paul, unfortunately, Paul. Paul, Paul. Paul Hornstein brought some uh, good luck to uh, Air Force there this weekend as he was there in person. <laughs> yeah, good luck for them and no. bad luck for Army. And uh, I do want to mention this as well. Uh, Army captain, um, Mr. Bielek, uh suffered uh, some sort of medical emergency on Friday and uh, was hospitalized Friday night. And I believe he's still in the hospital. Um, so I think that took a lot of wind out of the sails of Army. So our thoughts and prayers with the entire army team. And of course uh, the Bielik family. So just one of those things that happened. It's, uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, Paul was there to witness it and uh, thank God they have EMTs on the bench and get there quickly and, and uh, hopefully no severe damage uh, coming from Mr. Bielik. But uh, one of yes. those things that's uh, just a, it's very scary. a mood killer, a mood, a mood killer. Yeah. Yeah, we had a couple instances in that. Uh, going back to that uh, uh, Central Oklahoma Iowa or uh, Central Oklahoma game, uh, an Indiana Tech game. It was some moments there where the players went down pretty hard, some hard hits, and just some, some you know weird stuff happening. And and players were down for quite a while and had to be helped off. And uh, Central Oklahoma player went down. Also, Indiana Tech player went down. But you know, it it, it that something like that can can motivate your team. You know, I asked them about that after the game when Central Oklahoma won, and and they talked about it. Um, I don't remember the guy's name offhand, but people can go back and listen to the interview. They talked about him, but um, it's just one of those things where something like that happens. It's, you, there's a moment on that bench where now you want to, you have an, if you didn't already have enough motivation to win, now you have an extra motivation to, to do this for this, that player that got hurt and had to leave the game that we want to go out there and win it for this person. That, that, right. you know, yeah. I sacrifices, think it works in sacrifices it, himself to go ahead. <laughs> I think it re- worked in reverse for Army because I think it was their captain and they, yeah. they just yeah. lost uh, their leadership. Well, so, and sometimes and was, that happens. And and sometimes that happens. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't, yeah, and sometimes it that wasn't like a hockey I mean, injury, you know. That's the thing. Right. It wasn't a hockey injury. It was a medical that's emergency. Medical. And uh, that, that's different than a player being hurt on the ice. So, sure. Okay, so uh, let's repeat it one more time. Today's winners were start top to bottom and then we'll talk about the, the matchup tomorrow and We'll get out of here and let you get some sleep. Yeah, so uh, Liberty won today, seven to one over Illinois. Uh, Central Oklahoma won uh, two to one in overtime over Indiana Tech. Adrian won by two touchdowns and two extra points, uh, fourteen to <laughs> zero over Missouri State. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh because I feel bad for Missouri State when you're just. Uh, I do. Some, some days know. you just have it, and some days you just don't. I know. I, I really feel bad for them. And I had picked them to win, too. And I, you know, so, but um, it's just one of those things, you know. And, and Stony Brook, uh, uh, three two winners uh, over Jameson. That actually was, was a pretty good game, uh, a close game. But those eight, nine games always can, can be close. So, uh, so yeah, Stony Brook moves on. And 
And so that sets up the uh, the quarterfinals. Uh, let me get that real quick. It's going to be UNLV and uh, Liberty to start things off. And then you'll have Central. Uh, it'll be at 10.15 uh, Central time. So people in Vegas, if you want to watch it, it's 8.15 a.m. And, uh, of course, the other time zones people can look up. But I know people in Vegas will be interested in that. Liberty, I know, is Eastern time zone. So that's 11.15 Eastern time. Uh, Central Oklahoma will be taking on Iowa State. That'll be a uh, one. I think it's a 130 start. 130. 130 yep. Central. 130 Central time. Uh, Adrian in Ohio, that is slated for 445 p.m. Central time. And then the last game of the day would be Stony Brook against Lindenwood, and that is slated for 8 p.m. Central time. Okay, your last day of, uh, of four a days. <laughs> As they used to say in yeah. football, the two a days were killers. Uh, the four days in hockey are killers. Great job, Stephen. Mm-hmm. Good job. What do you got planned for us tomorrow for the intro? Anything anything special yet? That was great <laughs> today with the NHL guys behind you. Yeah, that wasn't my original plan, but actually what I'm, what I'm going to do tomorrow, actually I think will we'll, we'll fit with what I'm, what I'm going to tie it into. So, so we'll, we'll, nice. look, we'll look for that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Great stuff as always. And Good job. Bob. I'm looking forward. It's going to be in the – 60s uh, tomorrow, but it'll probably still be cold inside the Centene Center uh, <laughs> rink there, but it's going to be 60 degrees outside, but of course, I'll be inside for another 12 hours, so I won't really get to experience it until Monday, where maybe I can go out and explore a little bit. Monday you can, you because out. it'll be uh, it'll be 4.45, first game on before Monday. I, before I await your uh, your presence and your arrival here to wonderful St. Louis. Yeah, that, that'll be worth waiting for, believe me. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, we'll say goodnight uh, from another episode of the Great West College Hockey Podcast in video form as we continue our coverage of the ACHA National Tournament, the M1 National Tournament. For Stephen Marsh, Scott Strandy saying goodnight. We'll talk to you all again tomorrow. Good night, everybody. <laughs>